so but God, is God, God spared my life for a reason yeah. to where I could open the doors for other people that come from the streets, that came from private to see that if you do the right thing, then you can grow up. You can be successful. And look, we still could be doing positive things and still get in the bag. Master P is talking about integrity, sticking to your core. And if there's some get rich quick scheme out there, they sure, they might make money right now, but will they make money five years from now? Will they be in business 10 years from now? In my experience, it's been more often no. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay, you from Dallas, Texas. And we've been reading your comments, listening to you, what you would like for us to react to and you asked for it, we brought it, Master P. Some of you guys asked for Master P, we're bringing it here in this episode. And the interesting thing about this is that Master P is on the Breakfast Club radio show with his son, Romeo. And many of you are interested in financial literacy and many of you are interested in creating generational wealth. And I think this is one of the greatest examples of that. If you didn't know this, Master P, born in the projects in Louisiana, actually was looking to play basketball. His dream was to play in the NBA. He got a scholarship, sadly got a knee injury, but through two years of business classes in college, sadly his grandfather had passed away and Master P had inherited a $10,000 malpractice insurance settlement check. With that being said, he took that money and opened up a record store and that's how he got access to a lot of relationships. That's where he started learning the game and he flipped one opportunity into another opportunity, then spent his money but flipped it into the next deal, flipped it into the next deal and that's how he's created the empire that he's built today. So for many of you out there that think that life insurance isn't important, well, Master P would have never been discovered had it not been for the $10,000 of seed capital. So if you want to create some generational wealth, one of the first things you want to have a conversation about is establishing that solid foundation we call about protecting income, which in many cases life insurance does to provide that income to that estate, income to that family to make sure if sadly parents die, the dreams of the children don't die or the grandchildren, in this case, grandchildren don't die either. And just out of curiosity, would you like for me to break down how flipping money from life insurance into a record store to create an empire helped him out and how potentially how it can help you with different parallels, obviously with different numbers, but how it can help you too as well. Just like we did with Waka Flocka and what he said uh, with DJ Academics, we broke down his financial strategy with life insurance, please put in the comment section below. From the lens of leadership, from the lens of financial literacy, from the lens of somebody who wants to think like a millionaire, wants to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. We'll start this reaction video here on this interview on The Breakfast Club. My main thing for me, y'all, I, I just want to educate the next generation. Like, it's about educating cool. our people. You say, how do we fix cool. that? There you go. We need yeah. to educate ourselves, whether it's financial literacy. I tell every athlete and entertainer. Here we go. Take one hour out a week and go online and look up financial literacy. That's a great point there. How much time in your busy schedule in between TikToks and IG and social media, in between your classes, in between your job, in between your goals, do you actually study financial literacy? Now, as a guy that's in the financial services industry for 23 years, I can tell you this, I'm still learning stuff about financial services. I'm still learning stuff about insurance products. I'm still learning stuff about investments and how to flip my money and making a 5X, 10X, 20X, 100X type of return in a tax advantage way with the least amount of tax being out to Uncle Sam and more of my money staying in our estate. But if a guy like me with no college degree can spend some time learning about money and continue to evolve from there, think about what you can do that are a lot more smarter than me, that have a lot more time than me, that have a lot more going for them than me. A lot of you guys can do it. And for those of you that are worse, guess what? For those of you that have worse off than me, still take that time to learn and grow because I don't care where you're at. All I care about are the behaviors and action it takes for you to start getting ahead. I break financial literacy down to four things. Number one is awareness. Are you aware of what you can do? Sometimes people don't know or want to get educated because they're not aware and they don't know what they don't know. Number two is then the education because when you're aware about something, then you want to get skills. Then you want to learn. Then you want to get classes. And number three is behaviors. It's one to know something about it, but what are you going to do about it? How are you going to behave about it? Because how you were growing up may be different from how you're going to be going for the future. And number four is actions and experience because actions bring experience. If you arm yourself and equip yourself, if you do nothing about it and gain experience and take action to embrace what a lot of people consider as failure, we're well, never going to learn because only time that you grow is when you face resistance, setbacks, 
and failures, because failures, if you look at it, aren't really failures at all. And a lot of people today feel bad about doing. They feel bad about going through the gauntlet and the pressure and the hard parts of failure. In all actuality, success, all it is, is failure turned inside out. So think about here about financial literacy, about educating the next generation. If you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you have somebody that you're in charge of, somebody that you have leadership role inside your family or in your business, it's one thing to teach the next generation, but you can't give what you ain't got. Are you educating yourself before you try passing on bad behaviors potentially to the next generation? See how you can better yourself because we're not prepared once we get money. Mm -hmm. And, True. and that's why we punt the finger, we get mad. They say, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. And it, it, it kills, steals, and destroys. And people don't realize that because you yeah. shouldn't love money. We make money. I don't work for money. That's true. Okay, by the way, the love of money, right? It's uh, probably the most misunderstood, misused scripture in all the Bible. It's 1 Timothy 6.10. It reads like this. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So oftentimes people take that out of context, talking about, well, if I don't pursue money to begin with, maybe I won't wander and I might be more Christ-like, I might be more godly. Well, at the end of the day, here's what I realize. Nonprofits, churches, schools, they all need money. So money is a function of our world. Money is a function of our society. Money is a function and credit and everything that goes along with it is a function of how we do what we do. You can't elevate your brand, your message without the importance of money and financing to get your message known. Because there's so many people out there. For example, how many times have you seen a talent, high school basketball talent, high school football talent, high school track talent, but they don't get exposure because they don't have the money to go to the camps. They have money to be seen where the coaches go. So if you want to be seen, you want scholarships for your kids, you want access to, to business loans and grants, you have to have the financing or get know how the funding works so that if you get money working for you. And just like Master B says, you don't go out there and you know, work for money. Money works for me. And so therefore, it's making sure to not pull things out of context. And by the way, for those of you who read the Bible, I suggest you read uh, 1 Timothy 6, the whole entire chapter, not just his verse, because it's a combination of the motives of what people tell you, what they tell you. They talk about false teachers. They talk about the, you know, the love of money, scripture. It's the motives of why people tell you what to tell you. And for example, I will tell you right this. I got zero courses to sell you. I don't have a mastermind. I get that asked all the time. Matt, do you have a mastermind course? Do you have coaching? Actually, I don't. I only coach for people with inside my firm that I'm blessed to be in business with in, in, in their insurance uh, uh, business from uh, coast to coast. I don't have a course to sell. Maybe down the road I do, but for the purpose of these videos, I have nothing to sell you and pitch you, but outside the context of how you should perceive, look at the word and look at the world, uh, through a set of values and principles that has been tested through the history of humankind. So hopefully that gives you a gauge of anchoring into towards morality and how you make big decisions in regards to finances. Like we can enjoy money, but that shouldn't be something that you would want to kill your brother over, mm -hmm. uh, Correct. Uh, treat somebody wrong, or make them feel powerless. Well, Pops, one thing I've seen with your career too, it seemed as if everything got harder when you actually got money. Yeah. It's like chasing your dreams and goals was the easy part, but it had a whole... So cool to have uh, Romy right there give his perspective on his observation, how he grew up watching his dad. And sometimes, by the way, my, my kids are older now too as well, and my, my son's 26 years old, and my twins are 21. And, and although they may say things to me today that I actually don't agree with and like, sometimes they take things out of context too as well, but I have to listen to the kids. I, as much as you think you're a parent perfecting your kids... It's actually quite the opposite. It's a two-way street. The kids are actually perfecting you because sometimes you may not see things the way you think you see things. Your kids can provide that other lens. Different type of pros and cons. Yeah. Money, once you problems. got there, yeah, it's and it's, it's hard to describe that to people, you know, because people think if you don't have money, money's going to well. But if you have integrity, everything. let me tell y'all something. If you have integrity, because my whole philosophy is this: love people, use money. That's right. Don't use use people and love money, which is the opposite. Fantastic here. He, uh, fantastic here. One thing I'd, I'd say this to as well is more. She says more money, more problems. Was that wonderful poet? Is an amazing poet and philosopher, uh, Biggie Smalls. Listen, more money, but better problems. I, for some of you, have problems. Would you rather have problems without money, or would you rather have problems with money? I prefer to have problems with money. Bus, do that the opposite. And so this is all a temporary success. You guys need to realize whatever we do, we look at Kobe Bryant. 
however many millions he have, he couldn't take it with him. That's right. So this is a temporary mm-hmm. success. You work hard to give somebody else your money in the end, or somebody else gonna take over it and do whatever they want to do with it. Well, it money don't matter. is man-made. Yeah. If you really think about it, money is a piece of paper. Yeah. It's so modern, if, it's if, modern, if, it's if the modern day currency. Relying on that, yeah. that tell you a lot about yourself. But even with the God is real thing, I want to read this real quick to y'all. We had a little Bible study the other day. Really? I felt no it was kidding. on my heart. Amen, it says, man. Sin doesn't destroy your purpose, it cages it. So I want people out there to remember that. And simply being chosen does not prepare you. If mm. opportunity comes and you aren't prepared, you'll fail. <laughs> so I think a lot I of people just tell you how I many people I run across. Gift horse is looking them right in the face. A helping hand is out there reaching them to get to the next financial level. However, remember, literacy is about awareness. It's about education. If you're not aware of what this helping hand looks like or what it seems like, because many of you think that opportunity doesn't land itself on your lap and it does what it does. No, when the good Lord decides to bless you with something, you still got to work to dig it up. You still got to work to process it. You still got to work to make sure you get it out there. I'm reminded of a Bible story in 2 Kings where a woman's widowed with her kids. Husband left her no insurance. Husband left her with no money. And one of the prophets named Elisha, he said, listen, go out and collect some jars. A miracle is about to happen in your life. So she goes out and collects some jars. And then she starts pouring oil into the jars. Next thing this oil doesn't stop. As much as she thought she emptied it, the oil kept pouring. And she kept getting the other empty jars to pour this oil into another empty jar. And the kids are running around, man, making sure they get all the jars in line because the miracle right now is happening and it's happening right before their very eyes and pouring this oil inside these jars. Next, you know, when the last empty jar is filled up, the oil stops flowing, okay? That's a miracle right then in itself. But that doesn't mean they got money in the pocket. And what the prophets say? Prophets say, go out. Go out and sell. Go to the marketplace and sell what you have. So even then, even though the miracle was being performed right before the very eyes, they still had to go out and work and process the effort and the actions to go out there and make sure they brought that money home and I'm not exactly sure how much money they made, but according to scripture, she was basically blessed for the remainder of her life because she believed in that miracle in the process, which she probably never sold anything before in her entire life knowing how women were in the Middle East. She probably never sold or communicated to other people much and uh, to do something the very first time, she was able to have faith in that and through not self-made, not through being team-made, but also through being faith-made, made her money to take care of her family. So bottom line, how will you operate when you have an opportunity in front of you? Do you process that opportunity that you got to work towards it or are you just expect it to miracle itself on you and just bless itself into your bank account? Work or just relax and hopefully it's direct deposit. What do you expect? Well, I think a lot of people just think just because you got talent, just because you're in a position, you, yeah, you got to refine that talent. That's yeah. not always well, the case. You got to expose that well, talent. I'm going to tell y'all something that I look at. You either want to be a pigeon or you want to be an eagle. <laughs> the eagles They're do not birds. fly with pigeons. Mm. And a lot of us get caught up into this, man, who's following me and all that. Follow, all that don't mean nothing because none of us make money off of somebody following us. And it's not going to change anything. I think we need to start getting back to having some integrity and don't be afraid to grow up. I love like, it, man. Don't be afraid just to grind and everybody back. He's anchoring everybody. Have some integrity and don't be afraid to grow up and change. If you look at us, yeah, we could have went either way. Me and my son could be in a project wilding out right now, going to prison together, getting killed together. But us changing our life, we should embrace that as a culture because now we're going to see more, like you said. We want to see more of that. We want to see more That's successful right. fathers and sons, That's right. fathers and daughters, yeah. mothers and daughters, Say m- mothers and sons. Say it. Like, but we have to start from somewhere. We don't have to compete. No, we don't have to compete. It's enough. Because think about it. On every corner, it's a store that owned by them, and none of them killing up each other. That's right. I think he's comparing himself to the, the, the black community and the white community, et cetera, et cetera. I, th- I believe he's uh, making the comparison, too. So if that's the case, I uh, I agree with what he's, what he's saying. You know, um, Oftentimes when I study wealth and how different ethnic cultures view wealth and money. And um, I was actually having a conversation back again to Alice Suazo, uh, one of my VPs in Chicago. Uh, we were having a cigar one time and uh, I asked him, what do you know about Black Wall Street? And he said, I did a whole paper on it when I was coming through school. So he was basically uh, uh, drilling down. He's basically, the, the numbers might be off, but he's basically, the, the conversation was that in the uh, Latino community, a dollar circulates to multiple businesses, right? And, and 
at the end of six weeks, the money leaves the Latino community to another ethnic group that has another business. Okay. In the, uh, in the uh, Asian culture, right, uh, that money might stand uh, maybe, let's say, for example, another six months. Business is the business. That dollar stays with inside that Asian community, and then it departs into another ethnic culture that has another business. But when Black Wall Street was around, now, for those of you that know more about this, let me know too as well. Um, and help me understand my accuracy on this, but basically the context was, the accuracy, the specific numbers might be wrong, but the, the concept is this. When money was circling amongst the black community on, under Black Wall Street, the dollar lasted for 12 months. In other words, everybody started doing business with each other. And I like what he said here about trying to compete with each other. No, we should compete to get better ourselves, to provide a better product and service, to constantly have research and develop how to streamline my processes and, and create a greater end user experience. So therefore people start coming back to experience that some more. So to an extent, yeah, we don't have to compete with each other, but that is operating from an abundance mentality. There's two types of mentalities you go about the world, scarcity mentality or an abundance mentality. And the scarcity mentality is the only way you win is because you take resources from somebody else. Win, lose. In an abundance mentality, there's a win-win situation. The most important person that wins is your customer. And then you win as a business. So what mentality do you want to operate from? A scarcity mentality or an abundance mentality? And to remind you, this is the world. There are so many people to help. There's so many demographics to assist. There's so many geographical locations to thrive in if you operate from a abundance mentality and do the work necessary to make it happen. Right. They all making bread together. Pops, they all let me, getting let me, sh- let me, They got stores in our neighborhood and we ain't killing them. Like, yeah. think about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Pops, another example how it's enough. You got two of the top rappers right now basically got the same name. The Baby. The little baby, baby, little the baby. baby. If your product is good enough, people will find you. You don't have to worry about this riffraff. I remember in being in the financial services arena, uh, so, there's such a scarcity mentality that prevails in the financial services arena, even in the money business amongst agents and advisors, that they fight over business. Maybe that might happen in a lot of other businesses too as well, but since I've been in this industry for 23 years, it's been my little jungle. But uh, when I'm looking at this, advisors fighting over business or agents fighting over business, why? There's so much business to be had. There's such a lack of, of advisors and agents in a marketplace truly assisting, helping people, especially in a multicultural middle class. Why? Because most financial services are designed by the institutions to really help the wealthy population, the affluent and wealthy population. Very few operate in a multicultural middle class, which has been my focus for the last 23 years. But when I do that and when I help that and I see the problems that persist, here's what I see. Habits, bad habits, financial habits that has transcended over multiple generations. So I'm glad to see this positive message here with uh, with Master P and his son Romeo. Keep flowing, man. The dude just different. And now look, you see those same people, and I ain't gonna say no names, most of those same people, they around the baby, they hanging, talking about how great he is now. Right. It's crazy. Like Now I will say P, and I like yeah. the baby, but he did come out in a diaper. That's the marketing. He got everybody's attention. Think about it at first. What people was talking crazy. Now they love him. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you know God could take you from the hood to Hollywood. He he did it with us, but you have to want to grow if you're gonna have some sustainability. Man, I love this man. I'm reminded of this this the saying that all truth passes through three stages. Number one, you're laughed at. You start something new, everybody's gonna laugh at you. Next thing you know, they figure out you're serious. And then you start challenging people, you start pushing some some limits, you start pushing some 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 limitations with uh, what they wanted to put you under. Next thing you know, you're violently opposed. People coming at you, lawsuits, competition, try to people trying to throw you under the bus, but you keep at it though. You keep improving. You keep refining your skill. You keep refining your product and service. You keep refining you, your habits, your attitude, your behaviors. Next thing you know, you're then accepted as self-evident. Yeah, we knew you'd always make it. Yeah, we always believed in you from day one. Yeah, right, but you gotta go through these three stages. And most people, they quit right there in the middle of number two. You have to grow. You don't. You can't keep doing the same thing you was doing last year, the year before, or uh, ten years. Like it's, expect us to involve in the business people That's for right. us to own things mm-hmm. and to educate the next generation. So you're growing grow up. or you're dying. Like, that's cool to me. That's street. That's real, man. Look, a lot of my man, OGs. I've seen a real gangster change his life. That's the most gangster shit I've seen in my life. Where you here for your family? 
like you want to put on for your family you want to do what's right for your family yeah, and I, and to be honest with you I had to think for my family like yeah. man if I want to be with this family yeah. and if I want to see you grow up and I don't yeah. want to be in prison a day nah, I need to change it's been right. times you know where my saying? pops yeah. pulled up we don't, we're not going to get into details but they had bullets in the side of his car when I was young so it's like he didn't have to it didn't have to be this way yeah. you know well, so but it, God, it God, God spared my life for a reason yeah. to where I could open the doors for other people that come from the streets, that came from private to see that if you do the right thing, then you can grow up. You can be successful. And look, we still could be doing positive things and still getting the bag. And say, man, I love this evolution. All change, all decisions have to go through a season. And I remember of King Solomon, he talked about this Ecclesiastes, that all things go through a season of timing. Let me explain. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one through two, I'll just read the first couple of verses and I encourage you to read the rest of the eight verses according to this. But it says here, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. So think about this, just with that planting, in between planting and uprooting, what has to happen? And re har harvesting, uprooting to replant again and cultivate. There's a season for those things. Some people call that summer, fall, winter, and spring. Those seasons evolve over time. Some people tend to expect immediate gratification. I'll tell you what, it doesn't happen. And if there's some get rich quick scheme out there, they sure, they might make money right now, but will they make money five years from now? Will they be in business 10 years from now? In my experience, it's been more often, no. Master P is talking about integrity, sticking to your core. Here in Proverbs chapter 11, verse three reads like this. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. And duplicity is defined as deceitfulness in doing double deals. Saying yes to one thing, saying yes to them, and trying to cross each other for your own personal gain. So let's take a look more about what Master P has to say. He was able to turn on the bag, say, look, I'm done with this show thing, because you grew past it. And a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people just can't do it because they, they love it. Yeah, nothing is wrong with growing. I think we yeah. live in this generation where people, uh, they're afraid to grow because they're afraid of losing something. A path it's not gonna be easy all the time. So people think that if it's not easy, they lose. I feel like every life lesson for me, but people might call it an L, I just call it a lesson, it's not yeah, a loss. It's, because right. I'm thinking like, this is gonna Think of a loss as a lesson, I love this it. This gonna get me to where I'm going at, and I just gotta keep going. And exactly. some people cry to quit. I'm like, no man. He cry to keep going, keep chasing your dreams and goals. There's no limit. I'm a master whatever I'm whatever I do. I get up in the morning without a alarm clock thinking that, man, nobody could stop me but myself. And most of us, any guy in the ghetto, anybody in the streets in the hood, nothing is stopping you but you. And sometimes you gotta cut people off. By the way, think about that. Think about the words that you say. Think about the thoughts that you think. So before the words come out your mouth, you gotta be thinking them first, right? Well, before you start thinking about it, it's how you perceive the world. So if you go back to how you are looking and viewing the world, your perspective on life, scarcity versus abundance, I'm broke versus poor. By the way, I'd rather be broke than poor because poor is a condition of the heart. Being broke is a temporary situation. I've been broke many, many, many times. But yet, because I knew there was a greater day, there was a greater light, there's a greater outcome if I keep pursuing my dreams and goals. I knew there's something there at the end of the time. But being poor, so somebody owes me something. I'm a victim. I'm, I'm helpless. I can't get myself out of this rut. Now, for some people out there physically disabled or mentally disabled, I get it. You need help. But for the most part, a lot of people that put themselves in that position to not get the blessings that they have been praying for, been praying for. I mean, yet the answers are right there. So uh, uh, for the most part, uh, people thinking about this conversation here, uh, um, um, part, uh, partaking here in the Breakfast Club, I wish more of this would happen and people would take ownership of their situation. That's what I was able to be my best, to cut people off that's not helping me get to where I'm going there, or even being a distraction, uh, just negative. Just negative people around, you need to cut them off. I don't yeah. care if you're kin to them or whatever. You know, you're going to do whatever you got to do for the people you love. Yeah. But at the same time, if they're not on the same page with yeah. you, Yep. Like, I don't want people just running with me, no. I want so, people pushing me. Boy, I love this. This, By the way, that is annoying, though. You're on people that push you? That's annoying. Why? Because it's going to push you to what you said you wanted to do. Uh, I'm reminded here in 1 Corinthians about the company that you keep. It goes like this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. It says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And if you go back to Proverbs, which is written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived, named King Solomon, the Proverbs are written to his son. 
his children, saying, hey, listen to me. There are certain things you got to know about life and wealth and prosperity and influence. He says like this about keeping the right company. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread it when every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all go who after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Heavy words from the richest and wisest man who ever lived. A value and principle that makes you think deeply about some of the decisions we are currently making today. And by the way, the chief person to make a lot of mistakes in their life, you're looking at them right here. I'm nobody better than anybody else. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm just here to share with you a set of values and principles I've chosen to follow in my life to process the way I go about business and go process by the way I handle my money. Yeah. That's right. And so I just think that's what we have to get on that page to where build our circle different. Right. Like have some people that's going to tell you you wrong when you wrong. Not somebody just tell you just because you're making a break because we're losing a lot of young artists mm -hmm. because even the older people around them is not telling them the truth. they like, I'm in it for the bread. I'm just going to keep my mouth closed because I don't want this kid to get mad at me. There's an excerpt I want to share with you from my mentor's book, Your Next Five Moves by Patrick and David. I've been mentored underneath him for going on seven years now. It goes like this. It's about the most dangerous, unhappy people you need to pay attention to. It reads, I've met many unfulfilled, unhappy people. The most dangerous, unhappy people I've met are those who are extremely ambitious and extremely lazy. Where this combination produces envy, which is a deadly sin that will make your life a living hell. These are people who think big and want to do something big, but they are not willing to put the work to earn it. They'll cheat. They'll throw you under the bus. They're constantly looking for shortcuts. And if somebody else has what they want, it eats away at their very soul. If someone is winning at a higher level than you are, either lower your expectations to match your work ethic or increase your work ethic to exceed your expectations. Now, if you do neither, you will be miserable. What it all boils down to is that alignment is a key to fulfillment. Keep these things in mind. Your vision must align with who you want to be. Your choices must align with your vision. Your effort must align with the size of your vision and your behavior must align with your values in principles. So as you go about your day, as you go about your business, you, as you go about your career, whatever it is that you're about to do, what values and principles are you aligning with? That being said, guys, I'll know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out these two other reaction videos right here to help you process how celebrities and actors and entertainers do life. So therefore, you can start thinking like a millionaire. You can strategize like a millionaire. So therefore, you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. If you found value in this video, please consider hitting like and drop a comment in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, you've watched a couple of our videos, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.